Link swatted at the approaching enemy, a creature comprised of aged stone that seemed to have been worn away over many centuries, giving its body a green hue. It swiped at him once more, its makeshift weapon narrowly missing that young hero as he dodged and rolled out of the way. However, while the way the weapon had been crafted might not have been deadly, it certainly had some additional effects that caught Link off guard. The huge, flat side of the wooden components joined together with a long stick formed a rudimentary implement that more closely resembled a fly swatter than any deadly axe or sword, and yet it had an impressive reach, as did the unforeseen extra attack caused by its swing. As the stony warrior whipped its wooden weapon through the air, it flapped a huge gust of wind toward Link. It caught him by surprise, the sheer force of it lifting him off his feet and sending him hurling backwards. He struck a nearby tree, flung into it by the sudden blast of air, and quickly scrabbled back up to his feet. That had been close, way too close. As much as it hurt to come crashing into it, if that tree hadn't been there, the hero of Hyrule would have fallen hundreds of feet from the Sky Island and been sent plummeting down to the world below. Reaching to the ground as he got back up, he grabbed a stick that had fallen from the tree and brandished it like a sword. He'd been learning a lot about using resources around him, and he wasn't about to let this newfound enemy put a halt to his progress. With a yell, he charged into battle, swinging his stick at the stone creature. It spun around, catching Link off guard. He ducked out of the path of its weapon, careful to move out of the way as quickly as possible, knowing that it would soon be sending yet another gust of wind in his direction. The weapon missed Link flapping a second powerful blast of air that ruffled the leaves of another nearby tree. The creature turned, its body rotating like a column of green stone, its spindly arms trying to redirect its weapon in time to block an oncoming strike from Link. Its weapon being larger meant it was much more cumbersome and far slower to wield, providing Link with the opening he needed to retaliate. He clubbed his wooden stick at the enemy, causing it to stagger and stopping its follow-up attack midway through the swing. Not letting up, Link struck again and again trying to use this movement of having the upper hand to his full advantage. But in his eagerness to overcome his opponent, the hero made a critical error. He'd overlooked his choice of weapon. It was just a simple stick, and its durability was rapidly diminishing with every hit. The stick suddenly snapped in Link's hands, leaving him unarmed. His enemy, immediately detecting he was defenseless, swung its own wooden weapon once more. Link held up his shield, planting his feet firmly on the ground, hoping he'd be able to withstand the attack. But as the swing passed, Yet another rush of air followed it, and despite his efforts to withstand it, the hero of Hyrule could feel the force of the wind pushing him back. His feet were slipping beneath him as he held up his shield. Out of the corner of his eye, Link could see the edge of the Sky Island and the several hundred foot drop below. He felt his heel push just over the edge of the floating landmass, and Link almost lost his footing, wobbling uneasily. As he tried to right himself, the green stone creature was already winding back for another strike. Before Link could even attempt to get out of the way, or block the next rush of air with his shield, the whooshing force of it knocked him off his feet and sent him over the edge. Link was free-falling back down to ground level, frustrated that after all his progress, all the time he'd spent exploring the Sky Island and improving his skills, it all felt like it was for nothing. Now that he was plummeting back down, closing his eyes at the ominous sight of the ground speeding up to meet him as he tumbled down toward it. Not all that long before, Link had started his day's adventure on the ground level. The hooves of his horse galloped through tall, bright green fields of Hyrule grass, kicking up water in a mighty splash as the steed passed through a small lake with ease. Riding atop its back, the young hero barely even got his boots wet, as the speed of his horse caused his blonde hair to whip in the breeze. They passed stone ruins, littered around the landscape, still and abandoned, illuminated by the glaring light of the sun above, and surveying the skyline that had been when Link had spotted his next destination. Floating above was the Sky Island, literally a large mass of rock suspended high up in the air. So high up, in fact, that it was far too high to ever climb to it. Even with all of Link's experience scaling cliff faces and traversing up mountainsides, hovering at cloud level, the Sky Island looked out of reach. That is, until something appeared to fall off of it. It was a lump of rock, not exactly dropping out of the sky at dangerous speed. If anything, it moved with the gentle speed of an elevating platform. And that gave Link an idea. By the time he had reached the spot where the rock had fallen, it had already landed. Approaching it, Link hopped on top and decided to use one of his newest abilities, Recall. Suddenly, the rock that had just fallen started rising up through the air while Link stood atop it, riding it back up toward the Sky Islands. Recall could rewind an object's movement, so using it on the rock meant Link could now rise up to the sky. By the time it came to a halt, reaching back up to its point of origin, Link was now much closer to the Flying Islands but there was still a huge drop between him and the landmass. So he hopped off the rock, 
producing his trusty paraglider from his pack the second his feet left the safety of the rock. With the glider out, he was able to safely sail through the air, landing at the edge of Sky Island. Now he'd made it up, and it was time to look around. Just like on the surface, there seemed to be a number of man-made structures as well as plenty of trees growing nearby. But unlike the others growing in Hyrule, they sported branches full of bright yellow leaves instead of the lush green ones. Continuing to walk around Sky Island, Link picked up a tree branch. It wasn't exactly the Master Sword, in fact, not even close, but it could always come in handy later, the hero of Hyrule thought to himself. And before too long, he was proven right. Something came hovering toward him, out from under the shade of a yellow leaf tree. Its body was made up of many rings of green stone, all surrounding an energy source in the creature's center. It glowed green-blue, connecting two arms to its body. Its head sported one large red eye, with an orange horn growing out of the top, and a mouth full of stony teeth. This was a construct, a new type of enemy Link hadn't faced before. But after so many countless battles against Ganon, how hard could this thing be? Link swung at the soldier construct, using the branch he'd just picked up to fight off his new attacker. With three strong swipes, the construct was defeated and smashed into pieces, but as it came apart, so did the branch. Link's new weapon didn't survive for very long, and it broke after its very first use. Suddenly, the parts of the construct started to move again. The creature was reforming. Not good. Not good. Link quickly grabbed another branch and took a few more sharp swings with it before the creature could fully reform, causing it to come apart yet again, this time for good. The construct was beaten, but Link's second branch was already badly damaged, at least the danger it passed for now. He needed a way to cause more damage, and with a more durable weapon. Luckily, as he explored the rest of the Sky Island, he came across just the thing he needed. There was a large rock sitting atop a hill on the island. Approaching it, Link was able to use another one of his newer abilities, Fuse. This allowed him to combine multiple objects together to create various new effects. For example, sticking the branch and the rock together gave him a makeshift hammer. And not a moment too soon either, as a pair of two more soldier constructs appeared. Taking on both at once, Link charged into battle. One of the constructs took a swing at him with what looked like a fused weapon of its own. Hey, that's no fair! Link retaliated, lifting his heavy new hammer in a mighty swing against the construct. It came crashing into the ground with a mighty boom, only just missing the floating green stone soldier, but knocking it back a fair distance. The other tried to come in for a sneak attack, but Link spotted it coming. He dragged his hammer half boulder, half branch, swinging upward in a huge sweep that struck the other soldier construct with enough force to knock it apart. Its parts started to quickly move back together, just as the first of the pair moved in to try to retaliate. Link dodged out of the way, but he didn't return a counterattack just yet. He dodged out of the path of the first construct, looking behind it as the other readily reassembled. If he could just get the two of them lined up just right so that the first soldier construct was directly in front of the second then that would be his chance to destroy them both at once. Sure enough, the first construct hovered directly in front of the second, just as it reformed. With a huge swing of his makeshift hammer, Link brought the weapon crashing into the first of the two constructs. The sheer force of the impact drove it backward, sending it crashing into the construct behind it. As the pair of them collided, their green stone bodies came clattering into pieces, tumbling into multiple broken shards on the ground. Link was pleased to discover that his new makeshift weapon was not only much more powerful but also far more durable than the sticks he'd been using before. The hammer had easily made quick work of both the constructs, meaning Link could now continue to explore the rest of this sky island. It was the perfect opportunity, the brave adventurer thought, to further hone some more of his new magical powers. After all, he still had a ways to go to fully get to grips with all the possibilities Fuse could offer him on this journey. He decided to experiment with the fuse ability some more, coming across a pitchfork and combining it with a long branch. The result was a weapon with a much further attack range, meaning he could easily defend against oncoming enemies and safely deal some damage to them from a distance before they had a chance to reach him. He also started fusing items to his arrows, using ice elemental materials to create arrows that froze far away targets on impact. While hunting, aiming with an arrow was tricky, especially when trying to shoot at birds overhead. But by combining his arrows with eyes that had been dropped by some monsters, Link managed to fuse himself homing arrows that sought out the birds in no time. Link continued to traverse Sky Island. There was a calmness to the place, and if it wasn't for a number of other floating islands visible above or the clouds hanging so much closer to the ground, Link could have almost been fooled into thinking he was still all the way back down on the surface of Hyrule, instead of walking around several hundred feet in the air. There was a noise from nearby that caused Link to instinctively duck hiding in the shade of some nearby trees. Keeping low, he peeked out to take a look at what made the sound, and he spotted it. Another construct ahead. 
He didn't have his hammer or the longer reaching pitchfork on him anymore, but there had to be some way he could fuse some items to get the upper hand on the green stone creature. Searching around the undergrowth nearby, he found a mushroom, but not just any mushroom, a puff shroom. Link fused the puff shroom to the front of his shield, then leaped off a nearby rock and used his paraglider to float down toward the soldier construct. He had to move quick to make as much use of the element of surprise while he still had it. The construct spotted Link and floated toward him, ready to attack. As it did, the adventurer drew his shield. Link blocked the oncoming attack, and as the construct's weapon connected with the puff shroom, it caused a huge plume of white smoke to come bursting out. It covered a large portion of the surrounding area in seconds, masking everything nearby in a blanket of impenetrable fog. The construct searched for Link, swiping at nothing as the smoke swirled around it, confusing every movement for the hero of Hyrule. It missed again and again, spotting a shadow nearby that looked like it was indeed Link hunched over, maybe still hiding behind his shield. The construct floated over and brought its weapon down in a savage strike, only for it to glance off awkwardly. The shape had been a rock, and as for Link, he had been using the cover of the smoke to sneak up behind the construct undetected. Knowing his enemy had lost sight of him, Link took the perfect opportunity to make a sneak strike and successfully knock the construct to pieces before he had the chance to realize where he was. Fusing even the weakest weapons he could find with something else could turn it into a far more useful item. But there were a few more ways in which combining objects was a useful skill for Link on his adventures. Venturing further across the Sky Island, he was surprised to come across a river. It was directly in front of him, blocking Link's path. Swimming across didn't seem safe. The banks of the river stretched too far, too wide for Link to make it all the way. And of course, there was nothing resembling a boat anywhere around here. But by searching the nearby area, he was sure he could figure out a way to use the resources around him to make something useful to get him safely across. Luckily, Link quickly found that there were some logs by the riverbank and began to combine them into a makeshift raft using another ability called Ultra Hand. He lifted and placed three logs in a row, affixing them to each other. However, he quickly decided it would be better to reorganize the shape of the raft. Luckily, Ultra Hand let him easily detach the logs and reattach them together, making the raft into more of a Y shape instead. Pushing it onto the water, the buoyancy of the wood easily kept the simplified version of a boat afloat, but there was still a problem of getting it to move to the other side of the river. In its current state, it wasn't going anywhere, just sitting still on the surface. Link needed something to propel it forward. Luckily, lying nearby were a few discarded metal cylinders. Striking one with a stick, the device started blowing wind. A fan! Link had found a fan! He tried attaching it to his makeshift boat before using Ultra Hand to lift and place a second one on either side, making sure his raft was well balanced. Once they were attached and Link had hopped aboard, another simple strike switched both the fans on and the boat started gliding effortlessly across the water. It was moving pretty fast thanks to the wind from the fans, allowing Link to cross the river in no time. Passing by a small stone building, Link decided it was time to practice another of his new abilities. The structure was a small stone gazebo, little more than a lookout post, but it had a ceiling and that made it perfect for testing out Ascend. Stepping inside the building, Link was able to target the stone ceiling above and hop upwards. He instantly passed right through the ceiling, landing on top of the structure. Ascend allowed Link to quickly hop from one spot to another. If he was ever somewhere with a ceiling, he could just ascend to the floor above. And the best part was, despite a few restrictions, as long as there was a ceiling, Link could use his ascend ability pretty much anywhere. He tried the same thing out on a nearby cave, with a snow-capped hill above it. Sure enough, he targeted the stony ceiling and leaped upwards, zipping through a tunnel of bright green energy before he came climbing out at the snowy peak above. Ascend was certainly handy for saving time and Link's precious stamina when it came to climbing up the mountains. And if he were ever stuck in a cage, if it had a ceiling, Ascend could easily get the hero of Hyrule out of a jam too. Exploring this particular Sky Island had really given Link the chance he needed to get to grips with his newer abilities and better prepare himself for his adventures ahead. Thanks to being so high up, he felt on top of the world, not realizing another construct was coming for him with a large fan-like weapon until it was too late. Feeling the wind whipping through his blonde hair, Link opened his eyes. He was still in free fall, hurtling down toward the world of Hyrule below. The Sky Island had been so high up that it was less of a terrifying plummet down to the surface, more of a gentle skydive. He looked out over the horizon, the lush green landscape below bathed in a light of warm Hyrule sun. While the young adventurer might have been knocked down from the Sky Island by the soldier construct, there were still plenty floating above that he was yet to explore and stretching out for miles in all directions below were huge plains and mountains, an entirely new and unfamiliar Hyrule that he also hadn't discovered yet. What secrets were out there waiting for Link to uncover them? 
How many more new skills would his latest adventure teach him? From up here, on his gentle descent through the sky, Hyrule seemed to go on forever, bigger than it had ever felt, and all the more full of intrigue and wonder. So he'd fallen, Link thought. That didn't mean that there wouldn't be plenty of chances to get himself back up. Angling himself into a dive, Link increased the speed of his fall, watching the ground rising up rapidly to reach him. The faster he went, the quicker he'd arrive at the surface, and once he had both feet back on land, then he'd be off once again. Reaching into his pack, he pulled out his glider, the fabric catching the wind perfectly as it allowed Link to sail gracefully back down to the surface of Hyrule. He scanned the horizon, looking to spot a new location to pique his interest. There, right below him was a river and what looked like some ruins nearby. Using the glider to skillfully steer his descent, Link came in to land in the water before swimming to shore. Hyrule was laid out before him, ready to be explored. With both feet back on land, Link's adventure could continue.